everybody. Could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. Researchers in St. Louis have identified the part of the brain that differentiates between the new and the familiar. That part of the brain is called the parietal memory network. It's described in a paper to be published next month in the journal Trends in Cognitive Sciences. The parietal memory network, or PMN, plays a crucial role in the processing of memory by allowing us to recognize whether we're experiencing something that is familiar to us or something that we haven't experienced before. The PMN is most active when we're experiencing something familiar, like, say, encountering a friend. When we see something we perceive as being new, like encountering a person we've never met before, activity in the PMN drops. Because the PMN seems to be involved in the retrieval of memory, the authors of this study see it as a promising target for research into potential treatments for Alzheimer's disease. Next up, according to new research from the UK, listening to music can improve recovery following surgery. Researchers reviewed data from 72 trials and a total of nearly 7,000 patients and found that those who listened to music felt less anxious and more satisfied following surgery and reported significantly lower levels of pain and required less pain medication. Though listening to music at any time during the surgical experience seemed to have an effect, it was most effective for patients who listened to music before their operations rather than during or after. Listening to music didn't shorten the length of hospital stays, but it did make patients more relaxed and comfortable following surgery. And patients who were allowed to choose their own music reported the greatest benefit. The authors of the study suggest that music is a safe, non-invasive, and inexpensive intervention that should be made available to everyone undergoing surgical procedures. This study is published in The Lancet. And finally, researchers in the UK and Australia have found that playing Tetris for just a few minutes can reduce cravings. Cravings for what, you might ask? For just about anything. Food, drugs, cigarettes, sleep, even sex. Researchers studied a group of 31 undergraduates between the ages of 18 and 27 for one week and found that playing Tetris for three minutes when experiencing a craving for a particular substance or activity weakened the cravings significantly by about 20%. The craving weakening effect of Tetris didn't seem to wear off with time or repetition. It was consistent throughout the seven days of the study. The researchers suggest that playing Tetris could be a viable support tool for those who want a bit of help managing their cravings. This study is published in the journal Addictive Behaviors. Scientists identify the part of the brain that enables us to tell the difference between the new and the familiar. Listening to music can help with recovery from surgery. And playing Tetris may help people to manage their cravings. That's the good news. Right? I know. Do you have anything special that you use to manage your catnip cravings?